Today we're going to talk about the viscosity lab. This lab has two parts. In the first part of this lab, you'll use the rotating tank apparatus to first evaluate startup flow inside of a rotating tank, and then to look at the steady state profile of fluid inside of a rotating tank. In the second part of this lab, you will use non-dimensional analysis to predict the velocity of a sphere falling through a viscous fluid. In this video, I'll introduce you to the equipment which you'll be using in this lab. We'll start with the rotating tank apparatus. The turntable apparatus consists of a tank filled with fluid connected to this round turntable, which is driven by a motor. There's a sensor connected to the turntable, which sends a signal to the motor controller once per revolution of the tank. The motor controller has a power switch here and a variable speed control for the motor. Before you turn on the motor controller, make sure that the variable speed control is set all the way to low by turning the variable speed control as far as you can counterclockwise. Once you've done that, it's safe to turn on the motor and then start to slowly crank up the speed. Now be careful that the speed doesn't get above about 80 RPM where the fluid in the tank will begin to fly out and spray all over the place. The first question you'll address in the rotating tank portion of this lab is how does fluid viscosity affect the amount of time it takes for the fluid inside of a rotating tank to reach steady state? However, in order to do this, you'll first have to come up with some way of determining when the fluid in the tank has reached steady state. So you and your lab mates should discuss this with some help from your TAs. Once you've done that, you'll come over to the motor speed controller and starting from a condition at rest and using a stopwatch, you'll time how long it takes for the flow of the tank to reach steady state. And then you'll again time how long it takes for the fluid in the tank to go from its steady state condition back to rest. You'll repeat this for several different fluids and using that you'll be able to compute the viscosity of one of those fluids. You'll use that viscosity in a later portion of this lab. The second thing you'll look at in the rotating turntable portion of this lab is the steady state profile of fluid inside of a rotating tank. To do this, you'll use a strobe light which is connected to the motor controller. It's helpful to have the room lights dim or even off completely to complete this portion of the lab. What you'll see is that once per rotation of the tank, the strobe will project an image of the fluid inside of the tank. And so what you'll do, with the help of your lab mates, is trace out the profile of fluid inside of the rotating tank. Once you've done this, you'll connect these lines and then with your lab mates, you'll devise a way to take measurements of this profile and using those measurements, compute the rotational velocity of the turntable. You'll then compare this computed rotational velocity to the actual measure rotational velocity by the speed controller. In the second portion of this lab, you'll be measuring the terminal velocity of spheres falling through a viscous fluid. Behind me are two clear PVC pipes, one filled with corn oil, the other filled with SAE 10W30 motor oil. What you'll do is first, using three different types of spheres of known density, you'll drop these spheres through the cylinder of motor oil and measure their terminal velocity by timing the amount of time it takes for those spheres to travel half of a meter. You'll make several repeats of each measurement, and once you've done this, you'll use non-dimensional analysis in order to predict the terminal velocity of a fourth type of sphere of known density. Then, you'll measure the terminal velocity of that fourth kind of sphere. In the last part of this lab, you'll use non-dimensional analysis to predict the terminal velocity of one of these four types of sphere in a fluid of a different but known viscosity, in this case, corn oil. Once you've made your prediction, you'll take measurements of the terminal velocity of that sphere in corn oil, and compare those measurements to your predictions. That's the end of the viscosity lab. 
Again, if you have any questions, please ask your TAs. And thanks for watching.